So we have here a, uh, it's basically we're, we're going to go over the process of skimming your, your steam boiler in your house if you have one. So, you know, what might, um, what might uh, come up when you have a steam heating system is issues with uh, water level in your sight glass bouncing up and down or having issues with hissing and whistling at your uh, radiator's air vents when the system is uh, operating. Basically, it sounds like air is pushing in and out of the uh, radiator while it's steaming. Uh, typically, what contributes to that is when this water level is bouncing around inside the boiler and the steam pressure is wildly fluctuating. And that can be caused by either the, the boiling action of the surface of the water or actual foam that's being formed inside the boiler when the, when the water is boiling. Typically what happens and causes uh, that, that phenomenon is oils on the surface of the water in the boiler. So basically when you have any kind of piping work done, if you have any kind of stuff done to your system where these steel pipes, threaded steel pipes, have been modified there's typically oil on the inside of those uh, pipes that's a byproduct of either from the factory where the pipe was made or when the uh, threads were cut onto the ends of the pipes so what happens is when your system operates for you know a little while it carries that oil back to the boiler through the uh, condensate return line and then that oil ends up just basically building up in the boiler because it doesn't evaporate with the water so it, the system drags it back through the condensate from the pipes or whatever it was wherever it came from and it hangs out in here and then you get a film on the surface of the water which then causes foaming or it causes the the boiling process to be a little much more violent than what it should be and it ends up carrying water over into your steam header and then you have situations with strange noises uneven distribution of steam out to the radiators because you're sending so much moisture into the into the steam lines so the solution to this problem is typically what's known as skimming and not all boilers are going to have a port fitted on them for this purpose so you may have to have one added Typically, like this is a peerless, and they have a skimming port. It's an inch and a quarter threaded connection at the very top of the pre uh, boiler vessel. And I have just added a inch and a quarter ball valve, so this can be turned on and off and opened up. And then there's also, also a, a, a nipple with a, a lid on it, cap, a pipe cap on it. The ball valve's optional, but if you do use a ball valve, it has to be a full port valve, which means that the inner diameter of the uh, valve needs to be the diameter of the pipe. The advantage of a putting a valve on here is you, it allows you to just do easier maintenance because this thread here doesn't have to be gas tight, whereas if you just put a cap on it, you'd have to use Teflon tape or something like that to seal it when you're not using it. Um, you can also use a port like this to inject water chemistry into your boiler if you decide to do that. This makes it uh, easy to, to make that happen. So what we're basically doing is we're gonna feed water through the normal water feed line, just city water, you know, from your household cold water line that's, that's hopefully already piped up to your boiler and we're gonna basically float the oil to the surface and we're gonna discharge it here. So this is the, the uppermost point on the boiler. So the oil being lighter than water, is gonna end up coming out with this water here. And we're gonna run it very slow because we don't wanna agitate the water in the boiler. We want it to be very still so the oil stays on top. Um, Typically, the way that you do this, if you have any kind of piping work done on your system, you should let it let it run for a, a few days, you know, a day to preferably more like a week, especially with some of these pipe dopes and things that can 
get oily and, and get oil back into your system. So that will allow all the oil to come back to the boiler and then you can skim the oil off the top using this, this setup. So you could use a funnel with a drain hose, which is what I'm doing here. I'm running this right to a drain. Or you could put a bucket under here, but then you have to empty the bucket. So it just depends on what's available in your in your uh, basement or in your house, wherever your boiler is, is located. So the thing you have to be careful of is if your system has been running, um, has been running before you do this, this water is obviously going to be very, very hot. And you should shut the, shut the boiler down for a few hours before um, either you or the, the heating technician or whoever is doing the work does the skimming because you don't want to be sending 200 degree water into your PVC drain lines. It will melt the drain lines. The, it, it, that PVC pipe is only good for 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So they let the boiler cool down and uh, turn the power off when you're skimming so the burners don't come on because depending upon your setup, either your thermostat or if you have an aquastat will fire the boiler and then you'll be putting heat into water that you're just going to be uh, throwing away. So make sure the power is off. So that's basically the process. So I have this all opened up. We're just going to open our water feed valve. I have a two valve set up to, you want the water flow to be set very, very slow. So I already did that. So what's going to happen now is this is going to start flowing. You kind of want to set it for just a small stream. That way the uh, oil migrates towards this pipe and leaves the boiler. That's a pretty good level right there. You could have it just set it to that level of water flow right there and let this skim for hours. You know, I'm saying like two, three hours and that'll clear all the oil off the surface of the water. Typically when people do this, they'll skim it for a few hours. Um, obviously if, if you're stretched for time, it could go shorter. Ultimately what's going to determine the, the, the effectiveness of this is if when you fire the thing back up, that the water level in the gauge glass is steady, that it doesn't bounce around more than say a half an inch, and that your radiators are not making a lot of noise from the air vents, indicating issues with uh, fluctuating pressure inside the boiler. So whenever it's all done, whenever you decide to finish, all you gotta do is uh, throw your cap back on, whatever you have, close this up. If it's just a pipe nipple sticking out, you make sure you put some Teflon tape or pipe, pipe dope on here so that you don't have vapor leaks at this point. And then um, drain the water out using the boiler drain. Drain the water back down to your normal operating water level. And then fire it back up and you should be good to go. That's pretty much it. The skimming of a steam boiler to clean the oil out of it.